get some more because we we'll always remember that uh, that marabou once it's wet it really does thin out. So again I took off another quarter inch strip like so and right there I'm going to lay that down. And the marabou is just going to provide a lot of breathing action to the fly. So now we've got that. I'm just going to cut the excess marabou off and then I'm just going to take a couple strands of pearlescent flashaboo um, and I'm going to lay a couple uh, strands of it on either side of the of this marabou tail. Two or three strands would be great. It's just add again adding a little bit more flash uh, remembering that it, it's a fly that we're going to be using early in the season and then again late in the fall. Lay that down the side. Take a couple wraps with tying thread. And then I'm just going to, instead of cutting it and retying, I'm just going to slide it over to the other side and lay it down. And trim it. So now we've got the tail of the leech done. And then for the body, I'm going to be using, using uh, the Stillwater Solutions uh, Peacock uh, Crystal Chenille. So you can see this is where it gets its name, the Las Vegas name. It's very bright, flashy, green in color. This is a medium-sized chenille. I'm just going to take the chenille, tie it in at the, just behind the eye of the hook or the gold bead, and lay it down the back, tie it down along the shank of the hook. Bring the tying thread forward and then you're just going to wrap forward with the chenille and you can see all the glitter that's going to be coming into this fly. Tie it off behind the gold bead like so. Sure, she's cinched down, and then we're just going to take our whip finisher and finish off behind the bead. And there we have the finished Las Vegas leech. Again, simple to tie. I like some fairly simple flies because I have to tie lots of them, and uh, if it works, why not? So we'll just have a quick look at this fly. Well, there's no question that leeches drive uh, still water fishing, but also uh, stream fishing. Leeches Absolutely. are, are yeah. so important to us. They're a big food source. Black, red is it? Or black, green? red, I, mean, I was going to say it again. The, the red, green, but this is a black, green. <laughs> so, no, this black, is red. Black, red, sparkle leech. Sparkle leech. I like this sparkle. Again, you must be using some of these blends. Yeah, we're using a blend of our sparkle dubbing. Uh, a bit of black and maroon and red and it, it's, it's a fly that'll work well. It's a combination with a, a copper cone head mm -hmm. and, a, and a glass lined um, uh, maroon bead. So it's a bit of flash to it mm -hmm. and the right color combination of, of many natural leeches colors that you see in the water. I know uh, copper bullet heads is my favorite on any, whether it be woolly buggers, I just like copper. Yeah, and, and if, we, if we're fishing leeches and we've got beads on them, or cone heads or any fly, it's it just, you add another 50% chance of hooking a fish by using a loop knot. Oh, now that's Absolutely. something, and that's going to be one of our tips to talk about, uh, loop knots are important. And another thing to mention too, that uh, if you're looking to get better at lake uh, fishing, you want to check out uh, our tips tape on fishing lakes with both Brian and Phil Raleigh that we're filming here at the same time we're doing the fly tying tape. So you want to catch that to add to your fishing knowledge. Now it's on to the leech family. Absolutely. As long as they're not your relative. That's correct. <laughs> Remember that. <laughs> Thank you.
So we're back off the water and we're sitting at the tying bench again. And we're gonna start off with a leech pattern, a still water leech pattern that I call the black red sparkle leech. And it's a, it's a dubbed leech body. We're gonna be using a dubbing block to, to form a dubbing brush of two colors of uh, material. The front half of this leech will be the uh, Stillwater Solutions Sparkle Blend in a maroon black in coloration. And the back half of this fly will be Sparkle Blend again in the maroon color. We're gonna use red copper wire rib to make the dubbing brush. I'm gonna demonstrate the use of the uh, wooden turbo dubbing block. Um, we have to use at least medium thickness copper wire for this or any wire it has to be strong enough to be able to uh, withstand the twisting that we're going to do to build to build the uh, actual uh, um, dubbing brush so I'm going to hook the wire um, around the outside post bring it back and hook it on the wheel the counterbalanced wheel I'm just going to take the wire and hook it hook it around the hook of the uh, counterbalance wheel. And now we have the bottom of the wire laid down in the trough of the dubbing block. I'm going to take my maroon black dubbing that'll form the front of the leech and lay some down there, top of the wire, and, and then a bit of the maroon that'll be the back of the leech. Okay, so it lays on there. I take my wire and I lay it down over the material like so and then I'm going to start spinning the block to create the loop and as I spin the loop um, you can see the dubbing getting tighter and tighter and now we've created the dubbing loop. We're going to take it out of the little block here and we have our pre-made uh, dubbing with the um, maroon black followed up by the maroon. Now that we've built the dubbing brush, we're ready to tie the fly. I'm using a number six, three extra long streamer hook on this particular fly. You can see I've added two beads. The first bead is a 1 8 inch copper cone head. And then I followed it up with a medium sized silver lined maroon glass bead. And that just tucks in right behind it. And that gives it a good effect of the copper cone head adds weight uh, to make that fly swim undulating through the water, particularly when you use it with a uh, loop knot. And then the bead behind it just adds a little bit more maroon coloration to the fly. And I'm just going to build up a base of, of my 6 aught black tying thread, like so. I'm going to take my dubbing brush. So the back half is the maroon. I'm just going to take my tying thread, tie it in securely because you're tying in two strands of wire here, right at the end of the hook. I'm bringing my tying thread forward, and then I'm just going to take the dubbing brush and just wind it forward. So I've spaced it so half the back half of the fly will have the maroon We're finished up with that now and then we're coming up to the dark room black and finishing the fly off like so like that then we'll whip finish the fly leeches are a great trout food source at any time of the year they're available Every day of the year, they're not normally free swimming, but if you ever are on a still water and you see a free swimming leech, if you see one, you know there's gonna be more. And so they're always good to try. Their most common colors are black or maroon or maroon and black. And then you get mottled shades of brown and green or camouflage in color. They like to live undercover, but they do swim around and they're a big food item. A great time to use leeches is late in the spring or during the summer months, particularly at night. When you think about summer fishing late at night, uh, many, on many lakes, uh, the water is too warm during the day uh, for the trout to move on to the shoal or the littoral zone. But at night, when the sun's off the water and the water's cooled, there's more oxygen in the water, the fish will come back on and feed. And there's no better 
food source than presenting a nice leach uh, strip through the water. So I'm gonna, just going to take a, uh, a Velcro uh, brush now and I'm going to just pick the fly out a little bit to get, it, get that buggy look. It's going to turn the fly here a bit. And then I like to wet my f fingers just to figure out where, where I am and how much I've uh, plucked out. I want to try to keep it fairly slender. Like so. And when the fly is finished, when you've pulled out a lot of the material, you'll be able to see the red copper wire core coming through the body of the fly and that's that's an important aspect of the fly to be able to see that it, it shines it shows up well underwater and then I'm just going to clip some of the outlier pieces of dubbing that are out there trim it off at the back end and ideally an, an excellent thing to do now is to die is to tie half a dozen of these flies once they're finished you've tied them off take them out of your rice and then take a a measuring cup, a Pyrex measuring cup. Put about a quarter cup of water in it. Put the cup in your microwave and get that water just boiling. And then take your six flies and drop them into that just boiling water for about three to five seconds. Drain the water off, take the flies out, and then recomb them with your dubbing brush. What that hot water does is it takes the memory, a lot more of the memory, out of the dubbing. And the fly will lay nice and smooth uh, lay back down, but when you get it wet and put it in the water, it's still going to pulsate and breathe. And so it looks a little frizzy right now, but when you finished putting it into the hot water and taking it out and then drying it, it becomes a lot tamer in its shape. Leeches are a great fly to fish early in the spring, during the midsummer months, at night, in the evenings, and then late in the fall season because they're a big food item and there's not a lot of other insects emerging at those times of the year. You can fish them well with various sinking lines. I've got an intermediate sinking line on now. Regardless of the line that you're fishing, um, you want to allow the fly to sink to the desired depth zone that you want to cover. And that means you have to know the sinking rate of your fly line uh, in, in terms of how many inches per second it sinks at. And you want to know the depth of the water you're fishing and that's where your depth sounder comes in handy again. So you figure out or calculate how many seconds it's going to take for your fly to sink right to the bottom before you start a retrieve. You can do two types of retrieves on your leeches. You can do a, a, a moderately fast hand twist retrieve like this or you can do a strip retrieve where we're running the line through our thumb and index finger on our rod hand and then stripping with our other hand. And you can vary the retrieve from short to longer ones. Remembering that leeches don't swim quickly through the water, but they do swim on a continuous up and down undulating motion. And that's why overall that, if you can maintain a steady retrieve using that hand twist. We've, we've got bead headed flies on. I've tied them, I've tied the deep water leech on with a lube knot, so that fly's going to be dipping and diving as we're retrieving it as well. Continue on with the last of the leech family, deep water leech. When I think of deep water leech, I think about deep water, we just get a sinking line and get deep, but you've got to change your flies, don't you, when you get deep? Yeah. And, and less that, color. That, that, exactly. I mean, less so, light. That's less light. color. So the, the premise behind the, the, the use of uh, the mar deep maroon coloration for this fly maroon. is that Ooh. that's one of the last colors to disappear in the light spectrum when you go down in depth. And particularly when you're fishing clear water, that maroon's going to really show up. And we know that's a very uh, fishy color. Trout seem to like mm -hmm. that and, and other fish species as well, uh, steelhead is an example. Uh, and so the deep water leech is just a, a good pattern to use in deeper water and particularly effective in our clear water lakes. Well, let's go on to the last of the leeches. A 
I'm going to tie another leech using the turbo dubbing block to give you another example how to use this unique little product. So the turbo tubbing block is, is um, sold by Superfly. It has a European design and it's brought in into North America for sale. It's a simple tool to use, very easy and very quick to make uh, dubbing brushes using wire cores. I'm going to tie the deep water leech now using maroon sparkle blend and it's a purple in coloration. I call it a deep water leech because that maroony red coloration is one of the last colors to disappear in the water column with light. So you can see, the fish can see this in its true colors down deeper. And it's particularly effective in clear water lakes where you have the best sunlight penetration, so the best presentation of actual colors. So I'll now demonstrate the use of the dubbing block. We're gonna again take red, medium, soft copper wire, and we're gonna it around the post and then back around the hook on the metal spinning wheel. We're going to lay our material, our dubbing material, the sparkle blend, down the center on top of the wire like so. And then we're just going to take our copper wire and lay it down on top. I'm just gonna hold it and then start spinning the block. Like so. so then we're finished. We pull it off the hook. And we've got a beautiful uh, dubbing brush with a red copper wire core. Now that I've got my dubbing brush built, I've put a three extra long number six streamer hook into the vise. I've got a one eighth inch copper bead for a bead head. I've got my six hot pre-wax black tine thread that I'm laying a base down with. And then I'm gonna add a tail using just straight black strung marabou. The marabou tail should be about no longer than the, than the sh shank length of the hook. Tie that in. Trim off the butt. And I'm just gonna make sure I got a good base to put that put the dubbing brush on. So I've got my dubbing brush built now. Tie that in at the back of the hook. Wind my tying thread forward. And then I'm gonna take my brush now and just wind it. or wrap it to the eye of the hook. Keeping my fairly tight and keeping um, each wrap very close to the previous one. Once we get to the bead head, I'll tie the fly off. And then again, we're gonna use a Velcro brush to comb this fly out. So I wanna make sure we're securely tied in there before I Cut the brush off. And I'll finish the fly off now with the whip finisher. Like so. Cut it off. And then I'm just gonna take a Velcro hook, a little, and start pulling some of the fiber out. Again, we, we want to see that red copper wire core come through. I like to keep my leech leeches more on the slender side, just so that they'll breathe more naturally in the water rather than a heavily dressed leech. I'd rather have them uh, sparser. So we're getting that nice comb coming out. And I'm just going to be turning the fly as I get it combed out. And to get an idea how the fly is going to look when it's fully combed out, we want to just wet the fly down a bit. And that way you can pull out any outliers. And I want to 
to trim off a bit off the end here. So we'll finish cutting off some more of the outliers. Now the difference between this leech and the other leech that I just tied with the turbo dumping block is the color. This will appear deeper in the water column, show up better. It's got a marabou tail, it's a, it'll, a little bit more action to it. Both have bead heads and, and, and on leeches, as with many flies, the bead head, the metal bead heads add flash to the fly, they add weight to the fly. And, it, and the third thing is because of the weight and in combination with fishing them with loop knots, you get more undulating, more natural movement with the fly. So bead headed leeches can be fished on floating lines and longer leaders, sinking lines, type one, type two, or intermediate sinking lines, but also they can be very effectively fished under a strike indicator. And that is news to a lot of fly fishers, but when you think about it, a strike indicator will suspend that fly at a particular depth. You add the weight of the bead, the loop knot, and you can have that fly undulating up and down under that indicator. And if you add a bit of breeze, a gentle wind drift, you can cover a lot of water, a, lot, a zone of horizontal zone of water that the fish may be laying in or only feeding in a very narrow depth zone. That's why fishing under a strike indicator using a wind drift to your advantage can be so effective. So again, with this fly, tie half a dozen or more and then Take a little quarter cup of water in a Pyrex measuring cup, get it just boiling in your microwave, and then drop the flies into them. The, the hot water will take the kinkiness out of the material and it'll lay down nice and flat once it's dry, but it will still breathe once it's wet again in the water. And as it dries, after you fished them, they'll lay down nice, just like as you took them out of the water. So the deep water leech, a great color combination, uh, deep purpley maroon and the black marabou tail. Tie them slender and on the sparse side rather than overdressing because they breathe more naturally in the water. Bombers. I came to the lake yesterday <laughs> and they were talking about there's bombers over there. Well, you know, there's all kinds of connotation to bombers. I'm looking for bird bombing. I'm looking for big fish cruising. And I get over there and say, where's the bombers? And they go, right here, right here. And it's like an insect. You betcha. It's the great big, the biggest of the chronomid species. We call them bombers. They're, they're big enough. They look like airplane bombers as they're taking off after they emerge or if the females are coming back to lay eggs. And so we're talking about uh, flies, uh, uh, pupil patterns that mm -hmm. can be in excess of three quarters of an inch in length. We're like 10 3X, eight, even eight 3X hooks. These are... You know, a lot of stream fishing when we're fishing midgets are small, 18, 20, 22s. Right. You know, I'm a little challenged getting the, the leader through the eye of that hook that small. So, I, you know, 10 3X is a lot easier. <laughs> well, I like maroon. Now, I'm a big red or maroon, whatever you want to call it, fan. I, I don't know why you, you mentioned hemoglobin. Yeah, exactly. That makes sense. Yeah. But uh, there's red on our, our probably number one fly that our guides use is a red-bodied tarantula, red, bright red. There you I don't go. Know why? Yeah. Nothing it's, in it, any nature. <laughs> no, not in nature's that color, but it just it seems to trigger. It seems to work. Yeah. So this is a chronomid. Uh, chronomid pupil pattern, uh, one of our bigger bomber patterns, uh, and it's a good color combination with with the maroon body and then the silver and uh, red copper wire rib. For those of you that, of course, obviously go to BC and. Alberta and the other Canadian lakes are going to encounter these bigger uh, midges. You can say, wait a minute, does this happen in the U.S.? Well, you know, you fish Washington and Oregon. That's right, and then they're there too. In Idaho, and I mean, they're there. So you want to learn this pattern. So let's get started. <music> There's no question one of the most interesting and most challenging w ways 